So we're going to start off uh, with Mark Bangs uh, from the Home Office with an update on the commercial victimisation survey. So Mark is head of crime service team at the Home Office where he spent much of his career in crime research. Before his current role, Mark worked at the ONS Centre for Crime and Justice where he gained experience, extensive experience of the crime survey for England and Wales, both analysing data collected by the survey and feeding into the survey's overall design. More recently, Mark has taken responsibility for managing the commercial victimisation survey. So, after you, Mark. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, excellent. Right, so I'm going to give uh, an update on the on the commercial, commercial victimisation survey, um, focusing mainly on findings from the survey. Um, but just to start off a little bit about what the commercial victimisation survey is. Um, so first of all, it's a survey, so we're in the right place, uh, and it's about victimisation. Um, but it's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a wild card in today's discussion because it's not, not a household survey about uh, victimization of the general public it's obviously a commercial victimization survey so it's um it's a telephone survey of, of business premises uh, in England and Wales and it, it covers it aims to measure levels of crime experienced and, and the nature of that that crime um, so it's ori originally introduced well it's been around a little while actually um, uh, but originally introduced to kind of fill the gap in the coverage of our crime statistics. So we obviously have the Crime Survey for England and Wales, uh, which kind of measures crime against adults, uh, the adult population in households, and we've got our administrative data on police recorded crimes as well, but in, uh, well, the Crime Survey for England and Wales doesn't cover crimes against businesses, um, and it's quite difficult to extract the admin data on crimes against businesses. So. The commercial victimisation survey is there to really step into that, that gap and, and give us some, some evidence against about the extent and nature of crime against business. So the survey ran, um, has run annually between 2012 and 2023, bit of a pause uh, during COVID time. Um, it was also run a bit earlier than that as well, started in 1994 um, as a sort of standalone year of the survey and was also repeated in 2002 but hasn't been annual and uh, has been annual since since 2012 um, so how does, how does it work um, the, so this the CVS approaches is individual business premises rather than uh, targeting the, the head offices um, so historically each year it's, it's sampled a selection of, of three or four business sectors. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. But after a consultation with users uh, back in 2019, that, that coverage was expanded to cover all commercial sectors. Uh, so respondents about, asked about their experience of crime, similar to the CSEW, it's got a 12-month uh, reference period. Um, covers a uh, kind of range of crime types, theft, robbery, uh, vandalism, uh, assaults, fraud and cyber. Um, uh, so w in terms of measures that the survey produces, um, so we, the, the, the main measure is one of, of prevalence. So we talk about the proportion of uh, premises that, that experience victimisation, um, and also the frequency uh, at which that victimisation is experienced. Um, this, this was a change um, from previous uh, measures produced by the CVS. Uh, used to uh, produce a measure of instant counts, but no longer does that because we were very concerned about the reliability of the counts that were being produced. Okay. Right, so I mentioned earlier the, the coverage of the survey. I don't quite know how well you'll be able to see that, but I'll, I'll talk through it. 
Essentially, this is a, a sort of diagrammatic illustra illustration of the coverage of the survey. Um, so don't worry about the detail here, but there are probably three things that you need to take away from this, this diagram. So down uh, this sort of axis here, these are all the business sectors, and we've got the years of the survey along the top, starting at 2012. Um, and I talked about that selective coverage um, early in the sort of first part of the, the survey. You can see the green squares there show the, 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 the sectors that were covered. So in 2012, for example, we had manufacturing, transport and storage and accommodation and food covered. And then 2013, still covered accommodation and food, but also then picked up agriculture, forestry and fishing, uh, and so on, and, and kind of moved through different uh, sectors after that. Um, so that's the first point. You can see the kind of selective coverage of the, the, the sectors in the survey. Um, so that changes in 2022, when the, the survey is expanded here to cover all of these uh, commercial sectors. Um, and that's been the same in 2023 survey as well. We've yeah. kind of carried on covering all those sectors. And the third point to take away is at the top here, wholesale and retail. Um, that sector has been consistently covered across the, the you know, across all years in the commercial victimisation survey. Okay, so we're going to move on now to look at, at the latest findings from the survey. Okay, so estimates from the 2022 CVS, and that's what I'm going to be talking about here today, that's the latest published data, 2022 survey, showed that 28% of business premises experienced crime uh, in a 12-month reference period. So that's just under, equivalent to just under 470,000 business premises. So there's quite a lot going on on this slide. Um, so I'll, I'll talk through some of the main points here. Um, so thinking about that, 28% of, of um, premises victimised, so the most prevalent type of crime experienced by 15% of premises uh, was, was theft. Um, so theft also was the type of crime that, uh, that occurred most frequently among victims. So 65% of victimised premises ex experienced more than one incident of theft. And in 12% of those uh, victimised premises, uh, they were experiencing incidents of theft roughly once a day or several times a day. Most common type of theft was, was theft by customers, probably unsurprisingly. Uh, that was experienced by 11% of business premises. Okay, so thinking about other types of crime, assaults and threats uh, experienced by 7% of businesses. So looking at the, the nature of these, most were uh, verbal abuse so that, that, uh, of the victimised premises who experienced assault. It was in 76% of the premises it was verbal abuse. Or th uh, and then threats and intimidation, 61%. Um, so physical attacks were much less common. Uh, around 8% I think, of victims experienced this, this kind of assault that we might consider to be more severe with actual physical attack. Uh, other types of crime, um, burglary and vandalism, both experienced by 9% of business premises. So that's the kind of headlines that we, we draw out in terms of, of victimisation. Okay, so while we're a little bit limited by sample size in the CVS, it's, which is around 2,000 premises in the survey year, we can unpick this overall victimisation figure a little. Um, so, for example, we can look across different commercial sectors. And that's what this bar chart does. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Here, okay. Uh, so here we've got wholesale and retail. Um, and there, with 42% with of premises having been victimised in that sector, uh, we can see that that kind of appears higher than all other sectors in this chart. Um, 
actually it's not statistically significantly higher than a lot of those other sectors, but it is higher than these two at the end. So there is some evidence that prevalence of crime in, in wholesale and retail is, is higher than in other sectors. But, you know, some important, it's all important to me where the, the statistical significance of those findings. Um, so those, those two at the end, in case you're interested, uh, is financial services and business service sectors. Okay. Right, so also you remember at the beginning that I showed that the wholesale and retail uh, sector was covered across the, the duration of the, the survey since 2012. And this shows that trend in the prevalence of crime. Uh, it's actually stayed pretty steady over that, over that period. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Right. So the CVS also asks victimized uh, premises about the impacts of crime. Uh, again, apologies for the small text. I'll, I'll try and talk you through this. Uh, the chart here summarises uh, the data on impacts of crime. Most common impact was financial loss, um, and that's cited by just under half of victims, 45%. Uh, related to this, one third of victims said that they were impacted by stolen goods and services, obviously another form of loss could be considered financial loss. And a similar proportion of victims reported additional staff time being used to deal with, with the incident as a, as, as a, um, <coughs> a key impact as well. Um, so premises were also asked what type of crime they considered to have the most negative impact. The most common was, was theft by a customer. Um, see very, we know that's the most prevalent type of theft and, th and theft being the most prevalent type of crime. So we also asked some questions about antisocial behaviour and um, some of the, the key findings up here, I'll talk through those. Just under one in ten premises reported that they were adversely affected by what they perceived to be antisocial behaviour. Um, so among these <coughs> premises the most common types of uh, ASB cited were used congregating in the street, uh, that's cited by 35% uh, of that 9%. Street drinking and intimidating and threatening behaviour. Uh, most frequent impacts were putting off or preventing customers, um, being a general nuisance uh, and, and upsetting or, dis or, or being upsetting or disruptive for, for customers or staff. All of those mentioned by around a quarter uh, of those who said that ASB uh, had adversely affected them. How are we doing for time? Okay. So, just to wrap up on the survey findings, um, this, this is going to. I'm just going to give a quick overview of what the CVS tells us about reporting of crimes to the police, and also about uh, perceptions of the police. So, thinking about victims of crime. Um, over half, 58%, uh, reported at least, one cr at least one crime to the police. So, and of these, 46% said that they tended to routinely report every crime to the police. Um, so the, the chart presented here looks at reasons for, for not reporting to the police. So the most common reason given for not reporting was that the crime was, was seen as being too trivial, um, perhaps the loss being being too small. Uh, you know that you can imagine that being consistent with the, the prevalence of sort of customer theft. Um, thinking about a lot of uh, shoplifting incidents that you know they would have to reach a certain threshold before before crimes are likely to be to be reported, and that 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 bears bears out in the the data from the 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 CVS. Also. So, sort of slightly lower order that other reasons given uh, the police wouldn't be interested in the incident um, or that the police wouldn't be able to do anything about the incident um, both cited by 
in just, just over 10% of, of cases. So thinking about premises satisfaction with the police response to, to their crime that was reported. Um, so th there's mixed views here. So 39% of victims reported said they were satisfied and 43% and dissatisfied. And interesting point to raise here, sort of levels of satisfaction varied according to the type of police response that, that was uh, received. So around two-thirds of victims where the police attended the scene of the crime were satisfied with the police response compared with about one in five where the police didn't, didn't attend the scene. So the survey also asks more generally about satisfaction with, with uh, local policing of business crime. Um, so thinking about looking at those findings, half of victims said that they were dissatisfied with the police in the local area, and 46% uh, said they were satisfied. So, you know, not, it's a relatively even split. So, so unpacking this a bit, um, when they were asked why they were dissatisfied. Most common reasons were that the police took too long to respond to incidents, uh, and that the police weren't seen enough in, in, in the area. Um, and around 20% said that they believed the police didn't have enough resources to tackle business crime in their local area. I um, guess just, just finally, re I guess reflecting on those satisfaction scores as well, um, not strictly comparable with the crime survey, house, uh, you know, the household survey, but, um, you know, I think you'd probably say they're a bit lo lower than levels of adult satisfaction that we see in the crime survey for England and Wales. Um, so, you know, interesting to make those comparisons as well. Okay, so that, that's what I wanted to say about findings. Just to wrap up now, um, to talk very briefly about kind of where you can find the data. So we, we publish... Uh, from the Home Office uh, every year, a statistical bulletin which, which summarises the results of the annual CVS. Um, kind of given a very high level overview there. The, if you're interested in unpicking it and finding out more, uh, there's, there's more breakdowns in those figures and kind of extensive data tables that sit, sit uh, with that published data. Um, so latest published data I've just talked through. Um, we're currently working on analysing the results of the 2023 survey and those will be uh, out on the gov.uk website in May um, with you know lots more breakdowns uh, talked about business sector but there, there are other breakdowns uh, available as well like business size um, type of area rural ur urban so on but also to flag uh, obviously very importantly for today's event that the data the micro data are available via the UK data service, so we'd encourage anyone interested in kind of, you know, re research in the business crime sphere to, to make use of that, that data set. It's there and kind of available. Um, so, so please do, do look, it, look it out and, um, yeah, do some analysis. And I think I will stop there. <laughs>